Hello, 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 everybody. Here is Dr. Wugwail again talking about different topics and sides. Remember, guys, that we create and design this podcast to let everybody know about Harvard University and the magazine of Harvard Medical School. You can also visit our official website, which is magazine.hma.harvard.edu. You will be able to browse thousands of thousands of articles by issue or by topic. You will be asking Dr. Wugwail which topics do we have? Research, community, education, care delivery hours and achievement. The article to review today is a walk in the woods may boost mental health. Many physicians are prescribing time in nature as well for their brain. And visits California-based physician Danny Miller. They sometimes lead with a prescription that seems a bit unconventional. The prescription doesn't come in a pill bottle or required insurance approval, and it won't have negative side effects aside from the occasional suburban a put by. Rather, it looks something like this: drug time on the Richmond Bay Trail, those 45 minutes. Direction: Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday at 7 a.m. Refill and limit. Miller often prescribed doses of natural as a part of broader treatment plans of mental health issues like grief, depression, or anxiety. She insists that the tangled script for time outside can work wonders and that she is not the only one who thinks so. Natural prescriptions are increasingly popular, she said. A lot of faults are looking at what natural does to your brain and finding objective data to back it up. From Cambridge, Massachusetts at Harvard University Medical School, I want you to remind guys that you can also download these beautiful articles to read from the magazine website. Alright, we continue doing this review straight away. Peter James is one of those false James on Harvard Medical School Associate Professor of Population Medicine in Harvard Filigran Healthcare Institute Department of Population Medicine used data from the Nursing Health Study, which has followed a core of 121,000 women for decades to explore links between natural and health. Pairing medical records with satellite data, James and colleagues discovered that women living in areas with a higher amount of green spread were 12 percentage less likely to do during the 8-year follow-up period. As described in 2016 paper in Environmental Health Perspective, this association was strongest for cancer and respiratory mortality. James, who is also an associate professor of environmental health at the Harvard T.H. Klein School of Public Health, wondered why green spaces might cover lower the risk of death. Was it because plants absorb air pollution? Does people living near parks get more exercise? That's a question. Analyzing the underlying mechanisms and controlling for factors like socioeconomic status, he and his colleagues were surprised to learn that neither physical activity nor levels of pollution explain the decrease in mortality rate. Rather than mental health, measured as diagnostic depression or antidepressant use was the most important driver identified. Social engagement play a lesser but important role. There is no one pharmaceutical or precision medicine tool that could ever have a broad benefit of a forest. The research are a rose body of evidence indicating that our brain benefits from getting outside. Studies comparing participant mental health after they have spent in a natural environment versus built environments have really physiological difference, such as lower salivary cortisol levels, a biomarker of stress, or reduced activity in brain regions implicate in rumination, a cycle of negative thoughts between those who spend time in natural and those who did not, even being in dark rooms with windows that allow view of natural or contain natural features, like plants has been linked to cognitive benefits. The idea that we're somehow programmed to find solid and green area is not rocket science, say James, who is now using Google Street View's images and deep learning algorithms 
to home in one desired companies of naturals, such as the proportion of trees, grass, or flowers in given areas that drive health outcomes. He points out that the value of green space is baked in many aspects of our life, from real estate prices to spot on drought featuring natural sounds. The trap is we are natural, he said. We are not evolved to be a windowless room staring at a computer screen. This artificial environment makes us stress. They force us to focus more than we want and they tire of cognitive function. Forest Therapy Susan Abokier, she is a medical doctor, would agree. We involve in relationship with the trees, she said. If you look at the science, you see how, for example, the aromatic compounds of the forest offer our immune system, or how it regulates the microbiome of our guts. There is no one pharmaceutical or precision medicine tool that could ever have the broad benefit of a forest. Natural is both a healer or a co-teacher for a book here, and a Harvard Medical School assistant professor of medicine at Brigham and Women's Hospital, who has spent her career designing complex healthcare systems. Several years ago, she began bringing students in her system design courses outdoors to explore the complexity of natural ecosystems. That's how she got interest in forest fasting and she bring yoku a therapeutic practice of Japanese origin that involves spending time in the forest. Since the Japanese government began promoting the practice in the 1980s, hundreds of studies have highlighted the links to improve mental health. Abokir saw the potential of the practice that aid her medical students and colleagues with a problem that pervades healthcare work, but now, and she earned a certification in forest therapy. Each month, she brings a group of Brigham and women's medical residents out into Burton Corners at Harvard University Arnold Arboretum, located in Boston. She guides them to notice the smells, sights, and sounds of the forest, perceive the movements of plants, and feel connections with the nearby trees. Green space for everyone. Yeah, you don't need a certificate for a therapy guy or even a full fledged forest to repeat the benefits of green space. Even a city park, even a little patch of grass is beneficial. A book here says so long as a few ingredients are present. The feeling that you have been able to get away from regular life and a natural elements to focus attention on. She points that 2019 study in both fry and psychology that allows urban the willing participants to choose the time, place, and duration of their natural experience. Researchers found that even 20 minutes of this flexible natural pills three times per week will feel benefits like lower salivary cortisol levels. The ultimate goal is not to go to the Yosemite Echoes James. The literature says that people do better in cities and other places that have incorporated natural vegetation, trees, and parks. What we really need to do is incorporate naturals into everyday life. But even small doses of ringwary are hard to come by in some places. James Hoff, his research with encouraged policymakers and urban planners to design cities with more equitable access to clean spaces. Studies suggest that lower income neighborhoods get an even bigger health benefit from green spaces than wealthy communities do. You can imagine adding another advantage to a wealthy community isn't going to do much, he says. But if you can add green spaces, 
spaces in places where no exist, it could benefit people healthy substantially. Anything we can do to bridge the green divide and create green spaces equi- is going to change health outcomes, said Miller. The community of North Richmond, California, where she practice, has come of higher rate of chronic disease, hopelessness, and poverty, as well as some of the lowest quantity of per capita green space in the Bay Area. But she has observed that even trips at small parks or a huge bank drop down a road from the clinic make the difference to patients. I personally would love for access the green space to be a vital sign, she says. When patients come in, we check their blood pressure and heart rate. What don't we ask? Is there green space near your home that you can safely walk to and enjoy it? Alright guys, this beautiful article you can download it from the magazine has been posted by Molly Dono, is the associate editor of Harvard Medicine Magazine. I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.